next, understand the career of business architecture. So I've actually spent quite a lot of time trying to figure out what is the best value that I can give you in this session for those who are wanting to go into the profession of business architecture. So as a business analyst, what would that mean for you? So as Paul mentioned, um, we recently became a, a Guild accredited um, training partner which fundamentally means that um, for those who wanting to get their certification as business architecture, we provide the training um, and the tests and all of that to get you ready for it. So let's, let's delve into it um, in a little bit more detail. So first, I'm going to just talk about what is business architecture and just try to demystify um, business architecture a bit more for you. So, um, it's a discipline concerned with developing and maintaining business capabilities of an enterprise in line with a corporate strategy. So that's the technical term of what <laughs> business architecture is. But I like to refer it to really as the blueprint of how your business operates um, and provides that consistency across um, what decisions are made and so forth. Um, recently watching... Um, a webinar, there was this um, quote that came up and I thought it was so good and so relevant for business architecture. So science is facts, just as houses are made of stone, so is science made of facts. But a pile of stones does not make a house and a collection of facts is not necessarily science. And what this meant for me was as business analysts or as business architectures, architects, we really look at how do we work within an organization to build that house. So not just all the processes that we have and all of the different, um, you know, let's say systems and IT and so forth, but how do we build that house? Um, and I will be taking it even further because in a recent conference that I attended, um, there was a large debate around whether business architecture is about kind of blueprinting like you would a house, or is it actually uh, blueprinting what would be, let's say, a city? And there's a general consensus in the business um, analysis profession that what you're actually doing is you're designing a city. Um, and so I'll be using the scenario of working in a city council as a business architect um, as we go through the different types of um, learning experience. So just quickly, business architecture is the blueprint of an enterprise that provides a common understanding of the organization and is used to align strategic objectives and tactical demands. So simply put, <laughs> we know what we're doing um, and then we can make changes accordingly so that we can meet whatever those demands are, whether they're coming from, let's say, um, competitors or they're coming from new regulations or let's say we want to do some digital transformation. Those are things that we can do um, to help support that particular process. So as mentioned, the purpose of business architecture is to provide a common enterprise level framework. Um, and this includes what it does and what the goals are that's needed for that organization. There are four main um, core, let's say, areas to business architecture. And this will, this will make sense as we get through the slide, but I'm gonna get through the, the a kind of knowledge base area. So we look at capabilities and that is the primary area where I think business and uh, architecture makes has a lot of value. So this is around what does the organization do? And this isn't around what does the organization do, you know, just this month. This looks at what does the organization do as a whole over a long period of time. So if we're talking about, um, let's say, a city council, a city council would be working, um, let's say, to provide water services or to, be, to provide transport and roads. And what is the capability required to be able to deliver that particular um, 
need um, to the organization. Then we will look at organizational modeling. So this is who is doing this and in what, in what area are they doing it? So where does it sit? In which capability is this? Do they deliver transport? Do they deliver um, water services? Um, are they working in particular health, um, or not health, health and safety areas? So then we would look at value streams. How do we add value? So this is similar to processes, but it's different. <laughs> and again, this will become a little bit clearer as we go through those components. Um, and then we'll look at the information. So what is it that we do and how do we communicate um, that beyond just, let's say, building our capabilities or our value streams. So it's, this is really the core of what business architecture provides. And from a theory point of view, it can be quite frightening initially um, because it, it might seem all very new. But um, it really is the foundation. So what we do as business architects is we would take our capabilities, we'd look at the next level ecosystem. So we'd look at policies, we'd look at decisions, we'd look at strategy, stakeholders, et cetera, metrics. And we would create a blueprint of the organization. So we'd use scenarios and we'd use blueprints um, to create those. Now, similarly, if you look at your BABAP guide, you'll see that in chapter seven, we talk about requirements blueprints and requirements architecture. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how this, can, how this works and how it can bring together. I've decided to keep the presentation quite short um, so that I can, I can help you with some questions as we go through this. All right, so here's the real question I want to present to you. Why business architecture? So why should you even consider, um, you know, uh, moving into the career or learning more around business architecture or how to, um, you know, converse with enterprise architects or how to work with C-levels? Why should you consider business architecture as your next step in your business career? So as a business analyst, and I'll only talk about you as a business analyst moving into this career and transitioning, um, we kind of recognize and know this picture. So as business analysts, we are actually conduits of change. So we are act as change agents that can help businesses move from you know, where they are today, our current state, to the future state. And that could be through various initiatives, whether it's through, um, let's say we wanna do digital transformation, or we're looking at just improving a couple of our processes, um, or we are looking for, let's say, um, <laughs> I don't know, um, bringing in um, new, new ways of um, doing innovation. So, we know that when, and this is obviously a typical kind of agile user story, um, we would look at um, setting up a, a set of requirements um, and the requirements would typically consist of your business requirements as well as your user requirements and so forth. Now, once you have a business blueprint, you almost have a, a starter for 10 to really be able to set up your requirements without having to repeat yourself and without having to start everything all over again. <laughs> and, and this is what I found when working as a business analyst, that we often, you know, there was this strategy, there was this idea that we're gonna be working as business, um, you know, analysts, and we already know what the, you know, the, the company has already decided or the project has already decided what the solution is. And we've just got to build the requirements. And this is by understanding what your business architecture is, you can now almost bring in those right requirements from the beginning. So in business architecture, we design an organizational model. We design a capability map, and then we look at the value stream. So loosely, 
you would be able to pull in your organizational model. You'd be able to pull in your capability, which is around what you need to be able to do. And then your value stream. And you can figure out how you want to do this exactly, but I'll show you what those components are made of. And then your acceptance criteria is really around your solution requirements and your testing. So making sure that originally what those requirements were from your projects, you're already pulling that information. So that pain of having to figure everything out from day dot um, and then having to retrofit stuff and, and argue around whether the project is in the right direction or not in the right direction, effectively, your business architecture should take all of that pain away. Um, so let's look at the first big area of business um, architecture, which is your capability modeling. And this is something that if you look at the enterprise architecture model, um, business architecture is kind of your first step of being able to understand that enterprise and, and how it changes. So, um, creating a business capability means that we set up what does our business do? This isn't about um, what the team structure is or how um, you know, the different areas work or anything along those lines. This is what do we do? Do we send out emails? Yes, we do. And we should standardize that and send so that it doesn't matter what business unit is, you know how we, how we communicate. Um, so the nice thing around a capability map is you define upfront what your business does. What does it do? You break those down into functional areas. I obviously have just given you a, a, like a summary version here. Um, but as you break down those areas, you will be able to see what does the organization do? And you can link those to the business units which I'll show you in a minute. And the major benefit is having um, this heat map, being able to know how many people perform that capability. What is the risk level? Do you have, do you make money out of it or do you lose money out of it? Um, how much does it cost to invest in a change in that particular capability? So if we're talking about Let's say um, uh, we're going to look at um, city council and let's say the city council is doing a social housing project. So we would look at infrastructure. That's the yellow one on your right side. Um, we would look at infrastructure and we would say, okay, so part of that infrastructure development is um, social housing. And how would we then create a change in that environment. But not only that, what other areas would be affected by that change? So what about public engagement? So how would we be manage our media? We could also look at citizen support. So how would they put in the application? When would they put in the application? Who would approve that application? Um, which should all fit under your layering of your, um, of your um, capability mapping. Um, and then you can create a whole um, bunch of scenarios out of that to go, well, you've got this, we're doing this change, but this is all the impact that it has on the other areas. One of the really nice things about capability map is that you can also say, how many changes are occurring in that particular area? So in other words, how many projects and how many programs are we running, let's say in um, the public engagement space? And how many projects are we running in infrastructure? And what is the impact of those changes and those projects in those particular areas? So <laughs> to explain this, we are really just starting from having something that we already, you know, we're starting with something we already have, and we can put in the analysis to help understand what that change means. So that's step one, which is really helpful. 
then let's look at how we do this. Oh, Sherbet. <laughs> um, let me just stop this. Sorry. <laughs> I drew that from another slide. I'm going to skip that. So for, for hierarchy um, of requirements, we look at, I don't know why my sound's coming in there, um, but let me skip to this one. So when we look at the hierarchy of requirements, um, we would look at, you know, what are we doing? So as a user, I want to be able to do something um, so that I can achieve something. And when we look at the hierarchy of requirements, we would know that our requirements are based on, and this is, this is an assumption I'm making that we know, Firstly, our high level requirements, which is what are our business goals? So if we go back to our capability map, what is the goal in this particular area and this capability? So what is the goal we're trying to achieve um, in our capability? Then we wanna know who is involved in this particular area. So this is your typical Babox structure, but if you look at um, stakeholder mapping, you will say who's basically at the core of this capability, and then you would layer it out from core indirect, um, and then you would look at a peripheral. So once you have a um, organizational map, you can cross map the individuals from that organization into um, your, um, your capability and therefore it should pull out exactly what users are involved in that capability um, process. So let's have a look um, at your um, stakeholder or your value stream. So what you have as a process in typical, you know, BPM style or so forth, it's a little bit different with business architecture. You really just look at the high level outcomes. So what are the main components that need to happen? Um, that doesn't mean you don't carry on and do processes like you might have to do a process on how to apply for building consent. Um, but you wouldn't necessarily need to um, go into that level of detail. So the process will have the detail required on applying for business consent, but your capability um, cross-linking with your value stream is based on what is the outcome that you want to uh, achieve. So, what, um, so when you look at so that um, I can do something in your... Um, user story, you would be able to say, so that I can achieve this particular thing, which is I'm obtaining approval for my building consent, for instance. So in order to measure that and to create your solution requirements and your user testing or your acceptance criteria, you can then pull in the capabilities into each of these particular areas and you can test that we can reach those particular areas. So all of this is already, <laughs> we think, existing within the organization, which makes change a lot easier to manage. We also know that this already exists, so we can start to measure against it more effectively. So those are really the components that we sit with um, when we're looking at our requirements and how do we run our requirements. So we'll start off with how this user story fits into the business goals and the business requirements at a high level. We then break down that business requirements into your user restor stories or your stakeholder requirements. And then we would look at what are those solution requirements um, and the testing that we need in order to deliver um, to those capabilities, to that value, and um, you know, just generally to, to the business. So um, 
that's why I think um, business analysts should consider business architecture. So in a nutshell, business architecture takes the strategy. So what the business is trying to achieve, creates a platform that is the bridge to allow change. So it is, if you think of a city or you think of a house, it's creating that blueprint that, are, that should exist so we can make good decisions. So if you're wanting to um, build a house, you would be able to understand the impact that it would have, let's say, if you're going to change your bathroom, how that bathroom piping system, how that all works um, and what that change would, um, you know, how it would affect other parts of your home. Uh, so business architecture brings the strategy and the tactical demands together and provides you with the tools and the platforms in order to be able to deliver to that, um, that change. Um, but not only that, you can start doing some real analysis on the operations of the business because you have the information and the structure already there and ready to use. So <laughs> that's me. I'm going to try to figure out um, how to find to get back to this. I'm just going to end this for a minute. Um, and then, Paul, I'd like to open up some questions. I can always bring the screen back, but um, I'd like to see where we are question wise. OK, you want to go for questions now? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I think we've got a small enough group that I can just unmute everyone and, and people yes, can ask um, that would be great. questions. So um, I think I'm going to start off seeing it um, first in the line. Um, it's one kind of thing I'm trying to clarify from my mind, and that is kind of where does business analysis stop and business architecture start? And that's kind of what I, I'm trying to figure out at the moment. And then I'll, I'll mute everyone afterwards. And okay, sweet. Um, so business architecture starts at the beginning. Um, and so, you know, when people say we want to change something, that's where you, you bring in a business analyst and the business analyst starts helping you change something. So the business architecture starts um, at the very beginning where you are creating a structure that you can work with so that you can do change at the end of all of this, it does the reporting and the um, analysis, well, not so much the analysis, but um, allows you to be able to understand your organization and what changes have been made. So business analysts sit in the middle and business um, architects sit on the far ends and they do still work together in order to be able to make that change. What is it? Well, Enterprise at the edge of the framework. Okay. I'm just going to um, mute for the time being with the background noise and then I'll, I'll mute later. Okay. Sorry, continue. You there, Deirdre? Yes. Oh, sorry, we missed you. I accidentally oh. muted you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So did you hear did you hear my answer? Uh, yes, thanks. Okay. Good. Cool. Um, is there anyone that wants to ask a question? Uh, yes, I, I will. Thanks. Hi, Dajia. Thank you for yes. the presentation. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm just uh, wondering at this stage, um, of course, only in the last few years, I started hearing um, a business architect, uh, business architecture quite a bit mm -hmm. in large organizations, especially uh, when they are doing uh, transformation work. And I'm just wondering what, how long it's been going, what kind of history there is behind it, and whether or not uh, business architecture is just a new term that has kind of been, that kind of have morphed uh, into, <laughs> from a different thing in the past. So I was trained in business architecture eight years ago. Um, so <laughs> I was very fortunate and it was brought in because there was a big uh, change in the utilities group that I was working in. And so I was actually trained how to look at the restructuring of the organization. 
So as far as I understand, it's probably 11 years now. Um, so I don't think it's going anywhere because it's a key component of enterprise architecture. Um, whether it's been marketed effectively, I mean, that's probably a different, different question. But for me, there was a massive aha moment when I was trained in developing that organizational structuring um, coming from that BA field. Uh, so I just, I was like, oh, this makes so much sense. Um, and then, you know, it kind of needed to gain the traction. So I think between enterprise architecture and being able to, so the difference with enterprise ar architecture, it looks at business architecture at a high level as one of the components, whereas business architecture goes into that level of detail of understanding heat mapping and, and organizing um, and managing the organization. Thanks, Jaja. Uh, and just, just based on the experience I had in a lot of a large organizations when they are running big programs of work, they often recognize the importance or value of having uh, the key roles in the program, such as um, BAs, PMs, and quite often um, enterprise level, um, uh, enterprise architects. But uh, not all the time we will see uh, someone filling the role of business architect, even though a lot of times the EAs tend to do quite a bit of that. So in, in situations like that, how would you approach it to kind of uh, raise awareness of the value of um, business architecture or, or whether or not the program or the organization will need someone who is more specialized in doing that or whether or not you think a BA will have a chance to do that? I definitely feel a BA would be able to do that. And I think it will help your conversation. So if you're working with enterprise architects and solution architects, you can now have a real conversation with them. That's the, the first benefit. So I, I know that there's people who want to be business architects and, and kind of, um, you know, could go into that career directly, but for business analysts, it's a great career path. Um, and it allows you to do the work that you're doing, but get the benefit of getting that insight early rather than, you know, only when the project starts. So understanding that organization really early. Um, so I hope that answers the question. Um, kind of I, I think it's something that you should really consider as a business mm -hmm. analyst. Um, and even if the organization um, isn't ready to adopt that whole understanding. It means you've already got, um, let's say a toolbox in your back pocket, which you can use to, to stimulate the conversation in a more productive um, direction. That's true, that's true. Yeah. Thanks. Um, that, in fact, just the last one, I think I'll probably be asking too, too much, uh, too many yeah. questions. Um, do, do you see a need for BAs who especially uh, have had that kind of exposure and interest to kind of proactively to kind of change their um, the job title in a way to get into the role where they can uh, label themselves as a business architect or it's just something they should just do as a BA because they have the capabilities? I think you should get the badge. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, so. I would encourage everyone to get, get the certification. Um, then the reason for that is you need, you still need the training of how it works. Um, so that, you know, it, it's not kind of this mixture of being able to do something or not do something. Um, so get the certification first, first step. Next step is to have a conversation with whomever you're working for or your boss um, around how do you change and grow your role into something that's more meaningful. Um, and yes, if you can get the title business architect, that will help you a lot <laughs> in building that. Mm. That's good. Thanks, Sergio. That's me then. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Um, I just uh, kind of, I was at a, a meetup just before lockdown started um, and was with a group of um, uh, recruiters and we asked the question about business architecture and certainly they are seeing um, a lot more renewed interest mm -hmm. from organizations uh, for business architecture. That is, do you think it's something that's, that's coming back into fashion 
Um, Anthony had a, pick, a question. I promised I'll put him up next. Um, so Anthony, I'm going to mute you and you can go ahead. Hi, Tetra. Hello. Yeah, Hi. thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, I'm doing the Master of um, Business Analysis at Vic University. Yes. Yes. And this is my final trimester. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm learning uh, an enterprise architecture framework, which mm -hmm. is TOGAF. Yes. Very, very interesting. So in reality, do um, you know what's the role of TOGAF in your practical work? Um, so I focus on the Business Architecture Guild, which is a partner with TOGAF, basically, well, not so much a partner, but as I said, Enterprise Architecture looks more at the overarching um, point of view, whereas Business Architecture looks particularly at operating an organization. Um, so less around, let's say, it, it does bring in, in the technology. So um, just repeat your question. Just <laughs> yeah, uh, just the practical role of TOGAF. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. So, um, so for business architecture guild, which is around the business architecture stuff, so not so much the TOGAF, what you can do is you can bring in the conversation with your enterprise architect. So you can start to say, all right, well, before we do a change or before we structure in our company, um, what are the key components of business architecture that we need to bring in so you can break it down to a deeper level that's the fundamental difference between your TOGAF which um, is more at the conceptual level versus business architecture which goes into a, a, a much more detailed understanding of organizational practice yep thank you so much okay <laughs> Um, so JJ, just talking about the guild, um, so tell us maybe a bit more about the guild and what's um, doing your, your certification of the guild entails. Right. So the Business Architecture Guild is similar to the IRBA, um, focusing on business architecture as a profession. They have the um, BizBoc, which is the body of knowledge. Um, so like you would have your BABOC, which is your business analysis body of knowledge, you've got BizBoc which is your business architecture body of knowledge. So in a similar structure, they would have um, a nice big uh, document that you would, that has all of that framework and that um, structure, and they would um, host the, um, uh, the exams. So just like you, um, if you wanted to do your CBAP with the IABA, you would have to understand the body of knowledge and you would have to write an exam and then you would get a CBAP. In the same light, to, uh, the Business Architecture Guild offers that same process. So you'd have to understand your body of knowledge, you'd have to do some practice testing, and then you would have to apply to be a um, certified business architect. And that will give you um, that badge, let's call it, um, as well as understanding the profession at a, at a deeper level. Okay. And, and sort of the entry requirements to do like a guild, what, what sort of entry requirements do you? Um, so unlike uh, your IRBA where you've got to have professional development hours and that, you don't need that with the um, guild. Um, you do have to still write the exams. Um, and so the content is a little bit um, trickier to, to navigate through. Um, so it's best to still get training. So you can just study the guild, I mean, sorry, the BizBoc, and then go and write the exam. And you don't need to have been an architect. And this is key. And I think this is why they haven't gone through that previous process, because a lot of people are trying to get into the field. Um, and they need to understand the body of knowledge. Okay, thanks. Um, is there anyone else that wants to ask a question? Uh, hello, I think someone was going to ask a question. Yeah, are they un unmuted? Yeah, I have unmuted everyone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello. Evan. In fact, I will just yes. ask another question. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the um, because I'm relatively new to business architect in terms of the certification side. Hmm. Um, I'm just wondering um, for people who want to go down that path, um, how many options or what options uh, do we have? Um, I guess there must be um, certified uh, uh, educational providers or something like that. And who do we uh, go to? Hmm. So obviously I'm gonna say that I'm one of them. <laughs> um, so they are on the, on the Guild website, you can see who the certified um, kind of training providers are. Um, so there's a few of them that are available and have different styles of training. Um, it really does depend on what you're trying to achieve. So if you wanna get certification, you wanna have a list of practice tests, um, some of them, obviously, it's the only one in New Zealand um, that we're working with now, but there is a list. So if you go to the Guild, right. you'll see a list and you'll be able to um, do a bit of research. In that. Is that the businessarchitectureguild.org? Yes, that's right. it. Right, okay, mm. brilliant, thanks. And you can look at training options there. Indeed. Um, if you want to link to um, Agora Insights, who are providing the training in New Zealand, there is a link in the invite on the IBA website event page. There is mm. a link there. And I'll mm. repeat the link again when I send out um, a link to the video uh, afterwards. Kevin, you look like you've got another question, a burning question there. No, no, I was in fact just I have a question in my mind. I, I thought it's probably more um, too much uh, a joke than um, something to, to be asked. But since I'm put on in the spotlight, I would just ask. <laughs> I, I, I imagine there are quite a number of options. And uh, since that is kind of one of the uh, education providers. Uh, and uh, of course, that has um, some, uh, I guess, association with IBA and the New Zealand chapter, at least. And I'm wondering whether um, uh, Agora, if that's the name, will be offering kind of discount to the IBA members or something like that. <laughs> Very cheeky. Um, what I would actually like to appeal is I'm going to do a, a beta group um, with our next online training. Um, so if you are keen to understand what that might mean for you, um, best to just contact me directly. And <laughs> makes sense. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Good. Well done, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> ask, you might as well ask, right? Yes, yes, um, you could ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. okay. um, is there anyone else that's got a question, a burning question? Mm, everyone's very quiet. Everyone's very quiet today. Um, <laughs> yes. I, I was just, uh, oh, Lynn, you've got a question. Go for it, Lynn. Uh, you need to unmute there you go. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, I am. Thanks, Paul. Hi, Deidre. Hi. Thank you for the presentation. This is yeah. awesome. Uh, we've spoken before, and um, mm. I'm one of those business analysts forever who are aspiring uh, to, be, to get into the business architecture or discipline or field. I was just curious about the capability model that you presented. Mm. How was the overall model first created? I know you highlighted certain areas focused yeah. on specific areas of interest or change, but how was that overall capability model developed initially? Uh, so I kind of did it. Um, <laughs> That's the, fair. Yeah. So the Business Architecture Guild, so as part of your body of knowledge, they have several models available and um, they have a government, uh, government model. They've got a common model. They've got... Um, finance and they've got um, insurance industry. Uh, I, there might be more, but those are the ones I can remember. So what that means as a, a business architect is that you basically got a library of information that you can bring in and apply into um, your uh, business architecture um, design platform. And um, the, the good thing with that is that you don't have to necessarily verbatim copy it, but you can reference it. You can go to it and there's already um, a description of all of these different industries that you can use. And that's very, um, 
helpful, I suppose. Um, so what I did is in preparation for my training program, I've started to create um, capability models, which are fictional, um, based on some experience I've had in the past, as well as to help um, create a story in the training um, so we can understand how to build these models, um, you know, within organizations, how we can coach them to build um, them correctly and what are the language and structure rules um, that need to be, be done. So the one that I've been building is for city councils um, and that allows for that capability functional decomposition um, to be there and to start doing changes um, effectively in that sense. So you were able to leverage the reference model or capability map that was provided uh, based on government uh, practice as a, as a platform or as a trampoline, I if used, you like? I used gov government um, mostly, um, but because it's not quite the same as city councils, um, I also looked at, you know, what general operating um, structures were in city council. So kind of try to do a little bit of a blend to make it um, more appropriate. Um, and when it comes to the definitions of those capabilities, I will also look at the common reference model um, in the guild that the guild offers. And one last question, thanks for all that. How much engagement did you have in that particular initiative or project whereby you had stakeholders helping validate the model you were proposing to create that understanding of the business like you mentioned which is the goal of the map yeah so i'm going to have to um switch this around so the goal of this map was for my training so i've worked with a really small team and we worked over the last year around what those capabilities might mean um, in the organization but the the real live one which was done um, a few years ago which is around utilities um, that went into, um, so we'd look at the, the common model and then we'd build those capabilities according to what the organizational needs were. So it, it took a long time initially to build it um, and to use the right language and structure it. So it didn't fit verbatim into, you know, into that, um, but there was quite a big team of diverse people. So from BAs to business um, um, architects to uh, enterprise architects to different stakeholders and they all kind of like everybody had to build it together and then we structured the value chains and the value streams out of that. Thank you. Thanks Lynn. Um, so last call if there's any questions otherwise uh, we can end the session for the day. Going once, going yes. twice. Yes. Back. <laughs> so I've got to get the last one. <laughs> um, it, it, I just realized um, because uh, IBA has the um, CDP, um, the professional uh, development point, and I'm currently a CBAP certified, and I, I kind of every training um, I go for, I will kind of ask the question whether or not I will get the point. So. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, the business architecture is also kind of one of the knowledge that uh, well, the BAPOC touched on. Yes. I'm just wondering whether by going to uh, business architecture type of training, whether we will get the CDPs for our uh, well, certification for BAs? So with um, the session that we're having now, because the, um, uh, the business architecture is actually a perspective in your BAPOC guide, so in chapter 11 of your BABAC guide, you'll see it's got agile, it's got various perspectives. Um, this is one of them. So you can apply your points to the, the business architecture perspective because uh, you'll have to categorize um, what it was about. So yeah, you can do that, particularly as we've looked at the different types of um, requirement structuring that's in this. Indeed. Um, in fact, the follow on that, uh, if say um, one of us, um, uh, say I'm CBAP certified and if I kind of further down the line, get myself um, the badge for a business architect. And uh, um, so by doing the work of a business architect, do you know whether that will also be able to be um, credited back to the 
CBAP um, certification points? I, only the perspective, um, unless you're looking at the requirements um, perspective, um, I would keep them at this stage, the, um, rather just look at the perspective, but it's not necessarily right. the detail of the bad work guide. Right, okay, yeah. that makes sense, sure. Um, yeah. That's good. Cool. Thanks, Dejan. <laughs> okay. If I can just jump in there. Um, so, Kevin, I, I understood your question slightly differently, but I'll ask mm -hmm. it because I think it's maybe pertinent even if, if that wasn't what you were asking. I think what I heard was um, if he studies the business architecture um, and he's coming out for recertification of a CBAP, can he mm -hmm. apply PD points? And my gut feel is yes, because it's related to the... Okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, yes, because of that link to your, um, they actually have a partnership. So the business architecture, I, I forgot to mention this, your business um, architecture guild actually has a kind of a loose partnership with your IABA. And that was how that perspective actually got in there in the first place. Um, so I think that was done in 2017. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the date, but it was fairly recently. Um, so the, the two do actually work together. They have a very symbiotic relationship. So um, like I was saying, um, at the start, you've got your business architecture, and that also links to your strategy analysis, as well as your requirements um, chapter. So yeah. Okay, Indeed. so you're right, Paul. <laughs> Thanks Paul, for asking the question. It's kind of the second side of my question. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have both uh, areas uh, answered. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, Thanks. Yeah. Okay, thanks Kevin. So I'm gonna make a last call for any questions. Um, going once. Seconds. Yeah, really quiet. <laughs> um, okay. So I, just to sum up. So if you are a business analyst and you're looking to grow your career a little bit further than what it is to extend it into um, you know kind of understanding the enterprise and understanding and just taking some of that pain point from having to do requirements almost like too late um, and do analysis too late in in a project um, then you should definitely consider business architect architecture as a profession and as a certification because that will help you. So even if the business is not 100% ready, it's going to help you as a business um, analyst build your career. So good luck for anyone wanting to, to do that. Um, Kevin just asked me another question. Um, the slides will be available, um, Deirdre? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll make... I'll make them available. Um, I'll send that through to you, Paul, um, yeah. and then they can get access. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll include it with a follow-up email afterwards. Great. Okay. Um, great. On that, I want to thank Deirdre for time. Thank you for everyone for attending and um, see you at our next webinar. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Paul. That, that's thank great. You. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Thanks, Deirdre. Thanks, Paul. Thank see you. Ya. Thanks.